Good morning, friends. Welcome to welcome to Wednesday, and I am going to try and position this in a much better way than what it was. So, welcome to the Coffee Run Live. I don't have coffee this morning, but I do have tea. Um, so, there we go. So we're all good. So, some of the things that I thought that I would share with you guys today are kind of things that have come up throughout different conversations that I've had over the last week since being away. And it's not so much been around uh, like a lot of the stuff that we've talked about in the past, but a lot of the things that, you know, I kind of thought that people were across and sometimes they're not. So. One of the big questions that I had was while we were um, actually sitting at dinner the other day and this lady was talking about how she's like she's she's wants to build up this practice but like so she wants to build up a practice as an energy healer. So I've I've been away doing a, a certification in in some more energy work. And one of the things that she was saying is like, right, well what what do I do in order to be able to bring in money? whilst I am, you know, growing the practice and things like that. And it turns out that she's been building these websites, right, which is really cool. But the thing is, and this is what I thought was really um, interesting and I thought kind of insightful that, that may be helpful for you. So she also builds these websites and she's, she sells these websites, they're WordPress sites, they are all done and she sells these websites for $500. I'm like, she, she can like whip them out in a day and turn them over and, and people are happy and I'm like, man, that but that's really awesome. But you know, a lot of the a lot of the other things, you know, if she was going to start doing more of them, I said, you know, why don't we look at doing some other things that you could then maybe look at charging like twenty five hundred dollars for? Because in that way, hey tomorrow, good morning. Hey Trish, good morning. So I, I just said, you know, like we're sitting at dinner and I'm like, dude, you know, if you just, if you want to make 10 grand a month, sell four of those, do a week to turn around. And it turns out that she's also really amazing at copy. I mean, hands up who has issues uh, when it comes to writing their own copy for their websites. Right. So, you know, one of the cool things that I was chatting with her about is like, you know, why don't you add some of these other layers in, charge a bit more. It means that while you're growing the practice you can still be generating money you can still be generating income so guys like the big thing here the big lesson that I suppose that I wanted to share with you around that is that you don't just because you're wanting to make money in one area doesn't mean that you should necessarily discount the the skills that you have in other areas so it's kind of like transitioning from a corporate role perhaps into having your own practice right most people don't just go right screw it i'm done i'm quitting and now i'm going to go oh, <laughs> talking with my hands now i'm going to go and build my own business generally they they try to transition out so for those of you who are in your own businesses right now and you you might be wanting to pivot or change or, or tweak what it is that you're doing it doesn't mean that you have to stop everything right now and start doing this thing that you want to be doing like and and make it profitable 100% of the time straight away does that make sense uh, please let me know if that is oh sorry about that let me know if that's making sense to you because um I just think a lot of the time there is this kind of, there's like this almost misnomer, there's this kind of belief that we can only be making money in the thing that we want to be doing, or that there's some shame or uh, almost like judgment around uh, doing things, well, like to, to, to make money whilst growing. So I was, I was working in corporate, I was also selling jewellery while I was growing this business to make sure that like my, because my financial eyeballs were like here, <laughs> you know, like I'd, I'd kind of dip below the line and then come back and then dip below the line. But I needed to be able to do that so that I had a lot less stress whilst growing the business. So I hope that makes sense. Hope that helps you. Um, what else has come up this week? Um, Another question this week is actually, and if you have any, please make sure you let me know. I've actually just come off the flight from uh, LA to Melbourne, so my brain is kind of not, um, you know, quite as bang, bang, bang on it as, as what it usually is. 
So if you've got any questions, make sure you write them in there because I'm trying to recall the ones that I've had. And we were delayed coming into here, so, you know, that's kind of unhelpful. Um, all right, let us see what else is in here. Um, all right, guys, I think that that probably does it for today. Um, if you've got any other questions that you want me to answer, make sure you, you type them in, even if it's later. And I'm super happy to answer them for you. I'm just gonna have another look. I did have, I did have some questions that I wrote down. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, the importance of niche. So there was a there was something that came up earlier this week actually around niching, and there's, there seems to be a bit of confusion out there. Um, if you're in the states, you, some of you might say niching. So. One of the things with, with niching, and I think one of the confusing parts around this is that people think, all right, well, I'm going to end up excluding a whole bunch of people. So it might be where you, you know that you can probably work with men and women. You can, like your service can probably help men and women. Your service may be able to help people no matter whether they're 18 or whether they're 65 years of age. What I want you to rethink about is just kind of shift the way that you process and the way that you think about niche and rather than thinking about it like well it's got to be a man or it's got to be a woman or they've got to be you know whatever the, the reason that I teach niching is to give you some help when it comes to your marketing right so that you can really put yourself inside their shoes and understand what they're experiencing what they're feeling what they're going through almost on a day-to-day -day basis at any given time. So um, what that means is that when you're putting your copy out there, like when you're writing your posts, when you're advertising your webinars, when you're doing all of that stuff, you're able to have a, a conversation that is going to tap into who they are and what they're all about in a much deeper level. Now, the question around niching and the clarification around this came from a client that I've been working with for about eight months. Right, so she, she did this um, activity eight months ago and then she's refined it, she's been interviewing people, she's learned more, she's worked with clients, she learns more, and then tweaks and changes and everything like that. Hey Gary, good afternoon in, from Canada. Good morning here in Melbourne. So I think one of the things that people get a bit confused about is that if they have an, an opt-in or someone says, hey, you know, I, I'd love to learn more about working with you and let's say that you're targeting men and it's a woman who, who comes in, it doesn't mean that you say, no, sorry, I'm not going to help you, right? Because you, you will if it's appropriate. So it, it's less about client selection at this point and it's more about helping you to put on a really cool hat that helps you to, to really connect with who your audience is and build a conversation because <clears throat> what the thing that's going to make you different online is you knowing what your people are going through you feeling what your people are experiencing you being able to connect and engage with them and build rapport and build relationships with them rather than just going out to market saying hey buy my shit right so that's going to help you <clears throat> so um that was that and then there is another question actually that again uh, another lady brought up with me i don't know one day this week I, i've lost track of days um and it was around pricing now this woman has signed up clients at a particular price point and she actually said to me that the words were um Okay, so like I understand the theory around pricing and this, that and the other, but how much should I be charging? I'm not sure what I should be charging. And I said, well, how much do you want to charge? So this is for a six month coaching program. And I said, how much do you want to charge? And one of the other ladies actually piped in. She said, well, it depends on the blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, it doesn't. Stop. What do you want to be charging? And out of her mouth flew $2,500. And I fully wholeheartedly believed her. And I said, that's what you need to be charging. So you will actually feel within your body, hey Kelly, you'll feel within your body what your pricing should be. Okay, now here's a little trick on how to test this in another way. 
So something that you can do is put your hand on your head, right? Put your right, put your left hand on the top of your head, put your right hand out, and we're just gonna do some muscle testing. So you can just put your, your middle finger over your index finger and you'll ask yourself, just you know, say yes, and you'll get a really strong response. And then turn your hand upside down and put it on your head and then say no. And you'll be able to actually like think of it, it's really weird, right? Super weird. So no. And then I normally say um, a, a question that you'll be able to say yes to. So is my name Nicola? And you'll get a, I'll get a phone yes. You won't unless your name is Nicola. So then what you can do is you can think about think about your program, think about your offer, and I would think you don't have to have your hand on your head upside down or anything for this one. It's just should the pricing of my program be $2,500? And see, like, mine should not be. <laughs> so you can test up from, from say, $500 and up. You could test higher and then cut down. It's up to you. But you can use that as a bit of a muscle test um, just to see uh, what the yes and no is. So the reason that we test the yes and the, and the no is so that you can feel how your finger, how your body responds to that. So, you know, I could sit here and say to you, dude, like, it needs to be five grand. But if you get, like, a, a no for that, it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you're including in it. It doesn't matter anything at all other than you not only being able to say the number convincingly, but also know that you don't have anything rattling around in the back of your head that would um, kind of almost, like, undermine um, the price point that you're wanting to be charging. So that's a couple of little quick hacks for you today. Um, so that's me. I am going to go and get ready for my 9.30. I've got, they won't let me check my bags in for my next flight. I'm very grumpy. <laughs> so I'm going to do my get ready for my next call here. Hey, Karina, good morning. So have a rocking Wednesday. Now we are, let me just double check. I feel like we're back to our regular scheduled programming tomorrow. Um, Check that out. Yes, we are. So tomorrow will be a how-to day. Thank you, Karina. Um, tomorrow will be a how-to day. If there's something that you guys want to know about, please let me know, and I will do my very best to deliver that for you tomorrow. Um, and we've got Friday morning at 9 a.m. for the weekly wrap-up. I am running a live webinar tomorrow at 12 if you want to come and hang out with me on there. But otherwise, have a rocking an amazing day make sure that you've got your niche sorted make sure that you've got your pricing sorted and just get out there and kick some ass all right guys i'll talk to you tomorrow bye